Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The Hiranora International Airport establishes COVID-19 protocols as flights resume. The state of emergency proves necessary as the country enters the fifth phase of reopening. And the Ministry of Education evaluates the 2020 Common Entrance Examination. The Hiranora International Airport is buzzing with activity as the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, along with the Ministries of Health and Tourism, prepared for a return of international flights to the island on July 9. A simulation exercise was held Tuesday, 7th July, to test the readiness and efficiency of airport operations in meeting protocols prescribed by government and international aviation regulatory organizations. Lisa Joseph reports. After months of dormant activity, some semblance of life returned to the Hiranora International Airport Tuesday through an exercise simulating departure and arrivals in a COVID environment. Now, this was done not only by SLASPA, but in co collaboration with the Ministries of Health and Tourism, and as well as all our stakeholders, in fact, the whole airport community, the um, taxi drivers, the airlines, the Red Cup Association, the DMCs, etc. Everyone at the airport played a part. The simulation exercise sought to allay the anxieties of all operators within the airport community relating to health and safety concerns of St. Lucians and that of visitors and returning nationals. Among participants was the St. Lucia Hospitality and Tourism Association, the SLHTA. It was an opportunity for us to actually get involved in the actual exercise of um, exiting and, and coming in through the respective terminals so that we can test the protocols and look at possible gaps and areas and opportunities for improvement. We see today's simulation exercise as something very necessary to test the system and to ensure our readiness as we anticipate the arrival of, of visitors as well as um, locals um, come July 9th with the anticipated arrival of American Airlines. The simulation exercise involved the testing of temperature scanners, backup equipment, and procedures. There are protocols for passengers coming in from low-risk countries and more vigorous measures for those from outside the travel bubble. So in addition to the protocols that have been established with pre-testing and the pre-filling of the uh, form prior to arrival, um, where we capture all of the details and we're able to monitor the number of people coming in as well as um, information in, in terms of our locals for quarantine. Um, the testing of today's system with this simulation exercise only adds to our preparation. We fully appreciate the fact that uh, a number of persons in the community have different views regarding whether or not we should be opening up the travel industry and notwithstanding those concerns I think we owe it to ourselves to really share the information on the great work that we've been doing so far to create protocols that assure us of our safety and to help mitigate um, the spread of the disease. We have looked at countries that are low risk and the decision has been taken that if you are coming from these countries that uh, you would be exempted from um, the COVID test, as well as the 14 days mandatory quarantine. SLASPA says the simulation exercise was a demonstration of its commitment to the safety of its employees, stakeholders, customers, and the general public, as the island enters the most significant phase of its fight to contain COVID-19, as it welcomes a return to international flights. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reports in. Meantime, a number of airlines are to begin service to the island this month. Donalyn Vite is the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries. Commencing 25th July, we will see a first a once weekly flight that's from the UK, from Canada, in particular Air Canada. We will see a once weekly flight commencing the 18th of July. From the US, however, we have more than one carrier, and from American Airlines, we will see a daily flight commencing the 9th of July. So, in essence, our first flight, all goes well, is anticipated to be this week, the 9th of July. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Information, Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, Donalyn VT.
Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmont George says as the nation prepares to move into phase five of the framework to reopen the society, it is important the Ministry of Health and the government balance lives and livelihoods by navigating a safe path towards coexisting with COVID-19. Several social and economic activities are to resume this weekend under established protocols. The curfew is to be completely lifted as of Friday, July 10, 2020. However, the state of emergency remains in effect. The CMO says the state of emergency is needed in order to allow for quick response to any outbreak of COVID-19. For example, my role as a chief medical officer, um, it gives me some power under the Public Health Act and also the Quarantine Act. But the state of emergency gives, and it has given us the, the possibility of putting measures in place within short time. For example, the zoning, the restriction of movement um, of persons. It also allowed the institution of the curfew, which was, which was one of those measures. It allowed us to put um, protocols in place in areas that we don't normally do. For example, for, for hardware stores and supermarkets. It allowed, well, I said, the restriction of movement of persons, the, the, the liquor license. So it allowed, within a very short period of time, for measures to be put in place to be able to manage. And as you see, as you see how COVID-19 has evolved in a lot of countries, the measures put in place have to be done in a very um, timely manner. So as we move from phase four to phase five, as the public would acknowledge, it's a high risk move. This is the highest risk that we are taking as we move through the phases. So we need that measure in place to ensure if we need to put anything in place, it can be done within a very short period. Um, notwithstanding, we've been able to fully open the economy and everywhere else, having that backup plan in place. So it has not, um, restricted the economy, it has allowed the different sectors to open with the necessary protocols to reduce transmission. So from a public health standpoint, it gives us a safety net that if we need to pull back within short measure. The state of emergency was instituted on the 23rd of March 2020 to respond aggressively to the public health emergency due to the increased cases of COVID-19 on Ireland. As part of protecting the health and well-being of St. Lucians, the government of St. Lucia has made the decision to review and amend the Public Health Act. More in this report from Fernel Neptune. The amendment of the Public Health Act in 2019 is expected to address some of the key public health issues that are relevant and current in the development of the country. Chief Environmental Health Officer Parker Ragnanan spoke on the need to amend the Public Health Act given the changing environment. This review allow for new areas uh, to be brought under regulations. Some of these new areas include body art. So we know St. Lucians have been doing tattooing and body piercing and so forth, but that uh, practice had not been regulated. So on the new Public Health Act, it makes provision for regulations to be established for body art. Um, under the Public Health Act that was revised in 2019 as well, there is a new area that deals with um, smoking of tobacco products in public spaces. Mm -hmm. And what this act has done now is to um, take measures to ensure that uh, public smoking is uh, prohibited and therefore it must be done under very regulated uh, conditions. So there are now regulations in place to deal with these areas. The, the, the Revised Act also deals with uh, issues like uh, spas and, and massage parlors, and these are new areas generally. Ragnanan says a key part of preparing the amended Public Health Act and regulation was extensive consultation with a cross-section of society and stakeholders. The amendment of the legislation both the Public Health Act and the regulations has gone through a significant process over a, a period spanning more than 15 years now. There have been different consultations at different levels 
including uh, the government employing a legal consult consultant to review these regulations and to have consultations with key stakeholders and parties uh, and to come up with the best mix for St. Lucia. And that uh, was done. Um, apart from the consultations, uh, there were uh, discussions uh, interministerially as well to look at what is uh, uh, the best approach in dealing with uh, the, the, the regulations. In the new Public Health Act, 15 pieces of the public health regulations were amended and new regulations were enacted. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. Pledges to the National COVID-19 Response Telethon continue to pour in. The National COVID-19 Response Telethon Committee on Tuesday received the monies pledged by the St. Mary's College Class of 1987. It is heartwarming that at this moment we see the values that were taught at St. Mary's College being now played out by our, our past students. They learn the value of sharing. They learn the value of giving back. Once you walk through the walls of St. Mary's College, those are some of the values that we cherish. And, and, and today, we see it coming out in, in some of our past students, the class of 87, taking care of some of their own fellow Sumerians, taking some of their hard-earned money and making a contribution to the upliftment of another life, another Sumerian life. And so I want to congratulate them this morning and on behalf of the, the, the Sumerian family, the staff and the current students of St. Mary's College, say thank you to the class of 87. We intend to become a non-profit organization, function being to provide not-for-profit services to the St. Lucian community and to develop into into an organization that is able to contribute viably to the St. Lucian economy in whatever ways that we are needed, whether it be social um, assistance, um, whatever other service provisions, because we, are, we encompass a wide range of professionals, all of whom can contribute in whatever way that they may see fit in the future towards the, the betterment of the St. Lucian community, as well as our alma mater, St. Mary's College. On behalf of the organizing committee of the National COVID-19 Response Telethon, which took place on the 12th of April, which was Easter Sunday, I want to say thank you to the St. Mary's College class of 1987. Thank you, gentlemen. They did pledge on the day, but um, it was a group effort, and they are now presenting the check. So we want to say thank you, first of all, for even making the pledge, but also making good on the pledge, even if it is two months after, because there's, there are certain um, circumstances that would prevent these kind of donations from coming in. So again, I say thank you, but I also want to take this opportunity to reach out to St. Lucia and ask the persons who have pledged, who have not been able to come in, to please come in and continue to donate. Um, the funds are be have begun to be distributed, and so in the coming weeks, um, you would hear about the donations and how the monies are being used. In other developments, the Ministry of Education has been evaluating the just-concluded common entrance examination. This year's examination was held in what is referred to as the new normal due to COVID-19. Anisia Antoine has the details. Over 2,000 students who wrote the common entrance examinations on Monday, June 29, 2020, are excitedly awaiting results. Education officials have dubbed the common entrance examinations a success. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer, providing an update, confirmed the review of the examination day has yielded positive feedback from students, parents and educators. We continue to move forward and to forge ahead. We're so pleased that we've had our common entrance examinations executed in the most beautiful of manner without any incidents. And first and foremost was the well-being of all of our students. So all of the reports coming back in terms of the personal accommodations made for students with special needs and one of our physically disabled children, 
as well as the general feel of the students, the way they were able to just appreciate that moment in their lives has all been very, very positive. And so we must applaud. We must applaud the administrators, the teachers, the parents, the other stakeholders who were very integral to this happening. And in a special way, I want to highlight the efforts of our support staff, our caretakers, our janitors who were at the schools supporting us. The chief education officer also explained that St. Lucia is in the process of forging ahead with the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, CPEA. The CPEA is an assessment of the literacies required by all pupils exiting the primary school system. And what is interesting about the CPEA is the fact that you do have internal assessments. So you have projects, you have journals, you have writing of various experiments that can happen. And in addition to the internal assessment, you also have the external component of that, which is an examination similar to the common entrance. But what is integral is that students do get an opportunity over a period of time to show their learning. And so we have been able to start the initial training of our teachers, started last um, yesterday, started yesterday. So we're looking at our districts one to four, and next week we're moving on our districts five to eight to ensure that everybody's on board. Everybody's well aware. They have opportunities to question. They have opportunities to find out how the program will impact them. The Ministry of Education will be providing further updates on the common entrance examination results. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novel of We All. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19, and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Reduce your farm labor to only essential workers. Ensure regular hand washing with soap and water, or use 60% to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water are available. Clean all work surfaces and farm tools such as cutlasses, forks and sprayers with a 10% bleach solution. Ensure that toilets are cleaned thoroughly after each use and sanitize daily. Prohibit visitors to the farms. Limit contact among farm workers and promote social distances, ensuring six feet between each worker. And promote a no handshaking or unnecessary touch policy. More than ever before, your important role as the gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly grown fruits, vegetables, and other local crops. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle a Creole. Monsieur Ta Janelle, Monsieur Madame, Department, Kenny Responsabilité pour Formation à Gouvernement cette ci à CGIS, et NTN, Capuzato Nouvelle a Creole, Président Primus Hutchinson. Compagnie cette ci qui a voulu établir une façon de opération normale. Plusieurs activités sociales, j'ai trouvé permission pour vivre au poé. Mais ça a fait un bas d'id et principe qui bien gouverné et servi à ma maladie corona. Commencé vendredi le 10 juillet, Kai Cinema, Kai Vue, ouvert la porte li et institution de éducation des enfants, Kai ça a commencé opération encore. Diverses activités sport, j'ai trouvé permission. 
pour un spectacle à Bajid et principe qui est très sérieux. Business Yacht aussi, qui est ouvert là, encore, euh, ça c'est le conseil de gouvernement, j'ai décidé pour tirer un curfew et bien sélection à ce pays, notamment. Ça c'est comme le gouvernement, j'ai reçu le protocole, et bien j'ai révisé le protocole pour que les gens voyager à cette ici encore. Commencé jeudi le 9e, en mois de juillet 2010. Les gens qui ont désir pour visiter cette ici, qui pour présenter un certificat de santé, ça c'est 7 jours avant de voyager. Seulement, ils ne peuvent pas pour présenter un certificat de santé. C'est si vous sortez à des gens de pays, que le gouvernement s'est laissé, j'ai placé à ce liste de pays qui est libre contre la maladie de Corona. Ça, c'est pays à Caribla qui n'a pas de pièce de maladie de Corona. Commencé jeudi le 9 juillet, avion a commencé à vol pour l'aéroport cette ci mais tout le protocole j'ai en place pour ces étrangers qui ont débattu à ce aéroport pays. Le ministre des Affaires touristiques, Honorable Dominique Fede, a déclaré que tout arrangement j'ai en place pour l'examiner les gens qui ont entré en pays, particulièrement à ce aéroport Hewanora. Selon le ministre touristique, là, plusieurs groupes avec les DVD, euh, secteur touristique, j'ai reçu un traitement. Par exemple, travailler à l'hôtel, chauffeur taxi, travailler à Slaspa et travailler à Souci et au propre pays. Même. Les citoyens cette ici qui ne pouvaient voyager pour l'Angleterre, j'ai reçu une bonne nouvelle qui n'ont pas qu'à trouver yo en isolation comme le gouvernement de l'Angleterre. J'ai mis dehors une liste de nombreux pays qui n'ont pas qu'à pour expérimenter avec ça. Le Premier ministre Alan Chasney dit que ça c'est comme ça c'est bonne nouvelle tout bonnement. Le Premier ministre là, ça c'est Premier ministre Chasney déclare que ça a en faveur pays à en pile et parce que cette lycée a parmi 59 pays qui citoyens yo ça entré à l'Angleterre sans yo trouver quarantaine. Ça veut dire que pièce cette lycée qui est entré à l'Angleterre à présent pas qu'il ne pour rester en quarantaine pour 4 jours. Le Premier ministre a remarqué que ça a montré la qualité de la qui le pays a déjà accompli pour ménager la maladie de Corona. Le Premier ministre Chasney a ajouté que, à présent, comme vol international a commencé, les septiciens qui ont voyagé pour l'Angleterre pour visiter la famille, pour aller à son business et puis pour assister l'école. Et ça, véritablement, c'est une bonne nouvelle. Et ça aussi, c'est une bonne nouvelle pour gérer l'Angleterre qui a retourné. Parce que vous même pas qu'il pour rester en quarantaine. Mais le gouvernement de l'Angleterre a aussi notifié les gens qui ont visité qui, si par méga, vous trouvez vous dans un autre pays qui a bas la sélection des maladies de corona, là vous arrivez à l'Angleterre, il est nécessaire pour rester en quarantaine pour 14 jours. Le gouvernement de l'Angleterre a établi plusieurs règles nouveaux de maladies de corona pour les gens qui a visité le pays a commencé le 9 juillet 2020. Ça veut dire que les étrangers qui ont brisé l'examination faite à ce en 7 jours. Ça, c'est depuis qu'ils n'ont pas sorti à ce pays a qui le gouvernement s'est laissé. J'ai placé à ce liste qui n'a pas brisé ce test là encore. Les étrangers et l'autre monde qui ont navigé dans le pays qui a eu la maladie de Corona, pas ne pour pas être de 7 jours. Ces destinations, c'est des pays comme Antigua et Barbuda, Aruba, Anguilla, Bahamas, Babad, Bermuda, Bonaire, l'île du Vierge Anglais, ça c'est British Virgin Islands, Curaçao, Dominique, La Guinade, Guyana, Jamaïque, Montserrat, Saint Barthélemy, Saint Kitts et Nevis, Saint Martin, Saint Vincent et La Guinade, Trinidad et Tobago. Et tout et quelques. Les gens qui sont sortis de ce pays, ça là, pas qu'ils ne pour entrer en quarantaine aussi. Tout le monde qui a visité cette ici, aussi cette ici, qui a retourné en pays, ne pour 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 il y a des gens qui ont trouvé cette ici sans preuve de test ça là, qui ont trouvé immédiatement en quarantaine pour 14 jours. Et il y a des gens qui ont trouvé un pays et puis si des malades de corona, qui ont trouvé à la facilité de quarantaine, juste quand ils ont trouvé le résultat de test ça là. Si ce test là est positif, 
il y a un niveau pour entrer dans une facilité de traitement. Juste un, il trouve des tests qui ont montré qu'ils sont négatifs. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons trouvé nouvelle là. Je vous remercie pour vous pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation pour vous donner un peu Si vous conservez la vie, vous allez présenter une autre nouvelle à Kouyo. À présent, la célèbre mon vieux présenté au Chanel. Merci à Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.